Okay, we'll have to hold it there, but if you have questions, please don't hesitate to chat later, okay? So we'll welcome down Janet, and Janet's going to be talking about citizen science helping improve satellite measurements on water quality of water quality. Thank you. Welcome. Hello. Um, I'm from CSIRO, Oceans and Atmosphere. Uh, I'm here to talk about the research project that we've got running that's involving citizen science um, measurements in, and using those to improve our uh, satellite-derived uh, water quality products. The project team is mainly from CSIRO uh, Oceans and Atmosphere but also Data61 and Hans from Free University and Maris BV who are the, running the ion water application at the moment. Sorry, I didn't test that. Um, I'm a remote sensor. Uh, uh, we work with Earth, Earth observation data, and my team has basically been involved over the last couple of decades in looking at deriving water quality information from Earth observation data. We also have a he heavy reliance on collecting in situ measurements to validate and calibrate our models. And this enables us to produce accurate, um, accuracy and uncertainty metrics, but it allows us to then integrate that data into uh, process models. So Hans came to visit us uh, a couple of years ago at CSIRO as part of the eminent scientist um, visitor scheme. And he really inspired us with a lot of the ideas about what was going on in Europe. So when the DIS proposals were announced, we, we were quite encouraged to develop something for Earth observation. So we were awarded a project in uh, last year and, and we commenced in July 2017. So our motivation behind really uh, getting involved in citizen science was to really improve the density of information and in situ information out there in Australia. In the top right, on the top right hand side are the national reference stations in marine waters. There's nine of them, I think there's only seven now. They provide amazing quality data for us to validate our, our Earth observation data sets with, but they're few and far between. In inland waters and inland uh, Australia, the lower image shows some of the uh, monitoring stations that we have. And they're highly concentrated in areas like Murray-Darling Basin or southeast, south um, Western Australia or even Tas some parts of Tasmania. But there's large swathes of areas that's completely unmonitored. So our motivation was really to increase our knowledge by get, getting information obtained by citizens in these communities, but also to transfer some education and knowledge to those communities about what they were doing and the benefits of earth observation. So we will, in part of this project, use that data to calibrate our imagery and also hopefully better, be able to better report on the state of environment in the aquatic systems. So we've uh, decided to use the iron water application based on the vast amount of resources that have been uh, invested in the European project. We, we can learn from their experiences and, and gather that and develop further applications with it. At the moment it's currently used primarily by Tim Malthus, who's the next speaker, in, in, and his students in Brisbane, and myself on some various research projects that I'm involved in. But we hope to spread this application right through Australia, particularly in areas where there's a paucity of data. The conceptual model that we have is getting citizens to um, acquire quality data, integrate it into a cloud database, run a quality uh, control or assessment on it and then either integrate or compare it with satellite data products. And then importantly, d disseminate it to all the communities, both the earth observation communities but also the citizen science communities for, for their education and further knowledge. We had to go through... here on my screen. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Must have pushed the wrong button. 
Um, we had to go through, as the first part of the pro process, um, quite a number of steps. The first was human ethics approval. We had to try and figure out who we were going to engage and um, train <laughs> as part of this uh, project. We were, had to figure out a mechanism to engage, uh, to ingest the water quality information into a database. And we had to um, develop a communication plan with videos, web sites, information flyers, and, and plan for information sessions with communities. Importantly, we really wanted to focus on providing feedback to those communities to give them targeted information, to, to synthesise the knowledge that was obtained as part of the project, package it for various uh, user groups. So we realise that there's not going to be a one solution for each of the target groups that we're working with. So for human ethics, um, SARA requires us to um, obtain human ethics approval whenever we are working with actual people. And uh, that's because CSIRO is committed to the welfare of each of the participants as part of our study. So with our particular uh, approval, they required us to be very explicit in the descriptions and how the data will be used and how the, data, the user will be identified with the data. So <coughs> on our um, application, we increased uh, consent notifications on the app. And we also increased options on how the data will be publicly displayed. So the user has the option to choose an anonymity or um, various levels of information being provided. We've also developed a logo um, and modified the Ion Water app to include this additional information such as consent and also water quality um, information from our water quality kit. Uh, we've also increased uh, and improved the protocols to prompt users on how to use the application properly if they're getting um, bits of the jetty or bits of vegetation included, to give them more prompts on this data, on this pro protocol. <coughs> we've also bought our first lot of users a water quality kit to derive a whole range of environmental variables, which is really interesting for, for them. In, and it can be give them information about the processes that are going on in their community, in those um, water bodies of interest. But for remote sensing, we really focused on things like SECI depth, which gives us transparency, uh, water colour, turbidity, and chlorophyll. The only thing that we couldn't provide in the kit was really a chlorophyll sensor. <clears throat> so we've purchased one and we're going to hire it out to various um, uh, users. Our application, our website uh, is very much in a prototype stage, uh, but this is a, a mock-up of it and a, we're using a um, WordPress template based on Syro themes. Uh, on it we'll have project description and links to other relevant sites. We've got a web subscription web uh, newsletter that will announce uh, various field trips or various events or various information for our users. We've got user guides and protocols where hopefully we'll have some nice interesting videos about how to use, utilise some of the the uh, chemical kit or the um, Secchi disc and things like that. And importantly, we'll be uh, showing them their measurements, so maps of all the water quality measurements. So not only their measurements, everybody else's measurements. So people can look around the site of interest, but also drill down through time and look at the changes that are occurring. And this will be not only for water colour, but for the whole range of chemical parameters that I showed previously. So our target groups, and we've been really explicit in getting information from the European project, we haven't done a broad brush approach about acquiring citizens. We've been targeting them. And the first group we had hoped to, to engage with were the Teachers Association, Science Teachers Association. But 
In the meantime, CSIRO developed a teacher researcher in partnership program, TRIP, and were able to identify a, a couple of teachers for us to engage with. So we've identified one teacher, science teacher in Canberra, that is going to run our first uh, group of students through it, and then we're going to roll it out nationally. We've been really lucky in our selection of teacher. He's been willing to not only be involved as a partner in the project, but he's, been, he's actually written a curriculum to integrate the eye and water measurements for his year 9 and 10 students. The second group um, we're targeting is the Kimberley Indigenous Rangers. The, there's a um, the photograph of the watercolours show the complete diversity in tropical waters that we have and the really interesting processes that occur in these regions. So we have these uh, Indigenous Rangers, there's 13 groups in the Kimberley that are tasked for managing the land and sea uh, resources for biodiversity and cultural um, uh, conservation and these people are, are really well targeted for uh, developing this application and this project. We've been lucky enough to uh, engage a Badi Jawi woman from um, just north of Broome who's going to lead this project. Our third targeted group is the oyster growers, um, and particularly the ones near Canberra, which are really nice. <laughs> so they're really interested in um, this, this work because it complements their existing pro uh, monitoring programs. But the farmers are expressed a real interest in not understanding what's going on in the whole system, not just the on-farm activities. So understanding what's going on up catchment as well as down catchment. So our next steps are really to take the water quality um, data that's been quality assessed from citizens and integrate it with uh, satellite-derived ocean colour or coastal inland water products. And the, the maps I've shown up on the top right show Lake Hume in the progression of a, a temporal time series of satellite data showing a progression of an algal bloom that lasted over six months. And we see the potential of integrating uh, citizen science measurements into uh, this time of, type of time series because it may lead to early detection of these type of events. The other thing that we're interested in doing is really retaining their citizen science interest in supplying contextual information about their observations. So are they really interested in watercolour or is it actually trophic state or water quality information or are they interested in how that colour fits into their indigenous knowledge? So we want to tailor those sorts of products for each of the applications. For us as earth observation scientists, what we want to do is make sure that all that data is brought together and integrated with data sets such as the Digital Earth Australia Open Data Cube. Now Geoscience Australia have brought together Landsat calibrated data um, and they've spatially aligned it, which means it's perfect to integrate with citizen science measurements. It's also processed on the national computing infrastructure, which means that we've got this really rapid turnaround of data processing of satellite imagery to feed back quickly to the citizen scientists. Pitfalls and challenges. We've got to ensure equity in the school programs. Not every kid has a smartphone. We've come up with an issue that Chromebooks, which are issued to every ACT student, are not compatible with, with this app, but we've figured out, um, well, we are figuring out a workaround to, about that. It's been important that we engage with the right people. We've been lucky with our selection of, uh, of having an Indigenous person to work with the Rangers and the Kimberleys and a high school teacher who's willing to go a bit beyond what he's expected to do. Importantly, we've also had underestimated time and resources required to engage, to, uh, really, to develop really engaging visualisations and web interfaces to retain people's interest. Um, finally, 
Um, we've, we've achieved all of these things and we have developed a science plan to work with Hans to further develop the science and the integration of this work with citizen um, scientists. Thank you.